Welcome to this look at massive new mods on Farming Simulator 19 with me, Mr. Seely P. It's Wednesday the 22nd of July. We have new mods, a load of new mods, and we have a load of updates. Apologies for no mod review the last couple of days. Um, I have been uber uber busy and honestly I just didn't get a chance to get round to it. Um, we do have one thing I want to mention from yesterday. The farm silos for Total Mix Ration by DD Mod Passion had an update. A lot of people had reported that they were making Total Mix Ration in those silos, saving the game, coming out, coming back in, and everything had gone. That has now been fixed, it's been updated, and stuff should be staying in those silos overnight. Anyway, um, mods for today are as follows. From top left, we've got updates to the Stratman Terra Vitesse. Uh, by Agrotechnic Nordifle uh, loading wagon. We've got a huge update to Ischia Farms map by Black Eyes Modding. You need to check that out in the mod hub. Look at the change log because there is loads and loads of change in that. The Browds 9000L um, grape harvesting machine by Black Eyes Modding has also had an update. Uh, the Container BGA 45 kilowatt um, by Castor LSMC has been updated. The German Cow Barn by Musagra has been updated. The TTHD Flatbed by Way Too Drunk to Walk has had an update. The uh, Joskin 30 Cap Pack um, uh, Manure Spreader has had an update. Uh, what else has had an update? We've got updates to the Case IH Puma CVX165 by STV Modding, uh, the Metal Tech DBL Pack by Matt26, and the Crane Building by DD Mod Passion have all had updates. I hope I haven't missed anything. Don't think so. Um, those are the updates for today. Okay, so let's get straight in with it. We've got a couple of mods today. Well, this one especially, I thought we'd already had this, but I said this last time. This is the Lizard ADT-10 trailer by Stefan Modding. And we've had... Now, again, we could have had the 14, 16, possibly the 12. Maybe we haven't had the 10. Um, so here it is. This is a trailer. Um, it takes most, if not all, crop types. Um, it will use... My list is massive today. 16 slots. Fairly heavy on the slot count. Um, and yeah, you'll find it under trailers. It's not really a lot else I can say about it, honestly. Under tools, under trailers. 15,500 to buy, takes all those crop types, 10,000 litre capacity, options available, we can change our tyres from Trelleborg to Nokians to Lizard and back again. Those are your options. Um, it take, like I say, we'll take all those crop types. Uh, that's the ADT-10. Moving on, off the back of actually the mods I've just talked about, the, the updates, I'll tell you that some we're going to look at actually. Uh, people might not be very, very happy with me, but we'll see. Anyway. Next up then, we've got this. This is the Trailed Loader by, R by RL Modding. I like this. This has got quite a few options. I'm thinking in my head of all the various different things that this could be used for. And I'm liking this a lot. Um, so, as it says in the description, it's a Trailed Loader. Um, this is four slots for the loader and it comes with three separate attachments on it. Um, I think they're one and two slots each. Now this can be used for moving sugar beet, wood chips, crops, um, bale handling. I love that spike, that grab for doing bale handling. Now this can be also used as a standalone device that you can get onto. So you can take it somewhere, place it if you're loading bales into a, into a uh, hayloft or into a, a mixer or a feed mixer and you want it there all the time. That thing it's just very handy but it's also trailed you can hook it up with a pto and you can have it hooked up to the, the sort of the tractor all the time and just take it wherever you need to and operate it but it's a very nice bit of kit nicely modeled nicely detailed um this you'll find oh man this is where i'm gonna have problems so many mods today so remembering where they all are uh under miscellaneous is <laughs> the trailed loader 15 grand not too expensive either um the buckets like i said we've got uh, that was one slot that was two slots that was two slots 2100 to buy 1500 to buy 1650 to buy so not too expensive options available on the actual uh, crane itself the loader um we can change the rim color to anything along that palette so for example that main color we can change like so uh then design color 
does the chassis itself like that and then wheel brands we can have lizard mitus more chunky knobbly tires knock-ins we can have those wides or standard uh, and then i think it's back to lizard again yeah those are your options available so what we can do like so we can get in it like that um i'm gonna open up the help me menu turn it on uh l1 and square turns it on which means there's no engine sound which is a bit kind of off-putting but then we've got our movement we swing side to side up and down this is l1 and right stick at the moment like so um and then if we go r1 and right stick we can go up and down on that as well so quite a reach on it as well which is pretty good so like I say, if you're going to put stuff in, in hay lofts or into, you know, however you want to do it, or if you're just moving crop types or whatever. Um, so what we can do now then is my right stick side to side opens and closes the grab. So anyway, with the correct one selected, we can open and close the grab. The up and down. So it just had to be on the correct tool, that's all it was. I like the shape. Now there's no... You can't rotate the head on this one. Um, so that would all be done from that motion there so I suppose that's one minor drawback possibly not being able to rotate the head unless you come up onto the bales absolutely spot on you might have a few issues um, we can fold up the legs as well so if I fold the trail loader like so puts the supports away now you wouldn't generally do it like this without it being ta attached but if we get out of it get into our tractor And hook up now we can I'm pretty sure still operate it from in the cab so if you want to pull up somewhere and use it you don't actually have to get onto those you can do it from the tractor itself um, so if you want to go down that route again we can open and close up and down all the things we were doing before but for transport if I fold it up now put those legs up out of the way so we can drive around do whatever we want to do and we get where we're going it won't let me detach it oh just dropped off the back bit <laughs> it won't let me detach it until i've unfolded the legs so you have to unfold the legs first before it will let you um oh, this is driving me mad there you go before the actual legs have come down sorry that last bit got, got a little bit weird um, but yeah, that's that's a nice mod, that by RL Modding. Um, I'll say four slots, one and two for each of the grabs. It's a nice little bit of kit. I'm sure people will find use for those. Uh, moving on. So, here in front of me, we've got the Hangar 01 and 02. These are both by Stefane Modding as well. They are nine slots each. Um, hangar 1 and is the smaller wooden one over to the side there and hangar 2 is this one they are technically separate mods you download them independently so that's the hangar 1 mod a wooden structure not too big um hangar 2 that's a nice one that's i like that access all round plenty of height on it uh nice details nice textures not bad looking mods um these you will find under placeables under sheds both 3,500 each to buy, so cheap as chips as well, no problem at all. Um, slot count's not too high, very cheap to buy, nice looking mods, plenty of room around them. By Stefane Modding, not bad at all. Uh, moving on. Now, this one, I this is where people might get a bit cross with me, um, and if you do, you're entitled to, but I'm not going to be looking at this in any more detail, but what I am going to tell you is, this looks very innocuous, but this is going to make a massive, massive difference if you are playing on one particular map. Now, as you've already seen from the updates today, we've had updates to the um, Ischia Farms map by Black Eyes Modding. The Browd 9000 L uh, um, Grape Harvester, um, Vine Harvester by Black Eyes Modding, have both had updates. Part of the update for Ischia Farms, which I didn't go into a lot of detail on, um, I would suggest go over and read the change log because loads and loads of chains. Three crop types have been added. Well, it says three have been added, or is it four that have been added? Um, you've got alfalfa, red grapes, and white grapes that were on there already. 
but they've now added um, where are we? O olives and almonds. Uh, sorghum and protein pea have been added. Now this, because on that map you could only before harvest grapes, you couldn't plant them, this is a grape, olive and almond planter. So on the Is so Ischia, I know I said it wrong last time, Ischia Farms map, this, if you want to plant vines, if you want to do olives, if you want to do almonds on that map, you need this planter. So that kind of revolutionises that map, changes it massively. Now, I'm not going to go over onto that map. I'm not going to test it. I'm not going to show it planting and do stuff like that. Um, if I do at some point, it's going to be a little bit further down the line. I just haven't got the hours in the day to fit it in at the moment. Um, but let's like say, and it's fairly niche in that it's only on that map. This will not plant grapes or do anything else on any other map because as far as I'm aware on that map as well you've got the particular seed types or pallets or whatever you need I couldn't find any way of putting anything onto this there are no pallets on the standard maps and I tried to put it under the seed bit and it won't fill up with seed so as far as I'm aware that will that will only work on Ischia Farms on that map but that's pretty cool though adding those extra crop types in and the ability to be able to plant them um, if you do download it and install it um, I actually found it because I was looking all over the place and it wouldn't be under forestry it was under cedars no it wasn't it was under planters I looked under cedars first of all it's under planters um, so it's the Damcon PL75 which is well one for planting trees it requires 120 horsepower um, this was uh, four slots so not too heavy on slot count it does say the planter is for planting seedlings of grapes olives and almonds um, and like I say, I have been into the mods hub on this map, on No Man's Land, and I can't find um, any pallets particular or specific to those. So all I can assume at this moment is they are on the Ischia Farms map itself. That's where you'll find the relevant things for doing them. But like I say, if you are playing on that map, that's going to change things massively for you. Um, that is by um, Black Eyes Modding. So moving on, we've got this. Now this is a Sleep Through the Night Trigger farmhouse. This is the old brick house by Daniel X321. This will use 27 slots. It's got a fair bit of detail on it. Um, you can actually go inside. The Sleep Trigger is right by the outside. But like I say, nice bit of detail on this one. Um, it's fairly pricey. This may fit a map you're on specifically. I think the problem we've got now, because we've got the doormats and various different things available in the mod hub and deck chairs and there are very cheap alternatives to be able to do this. The more pricey farmhouses I find personally kind of price themselves out the market unless it is something you have been specifically waiting for. Um, so we can open the door. Door handle there. In we go. So you can go in, you can have a look around. I think this one opens as well. Go in there. And that one. But the actual sleep trigger is pretty much here by the door for sleeping through the night. Um, this you will find under placeables, under farmhouses. 85 grand to buy. So that's what I mean. It's fairly pricey. Um, we can get a doormat for 100 modded and I know on uh, Holland Chevelle there's the boots you can use and stuff as well um, but like I say it may be one that you absolutely particularly have been looking for in which case it's all very wonderful um, so there you go that's the old brick house by Daniel X321 uh, moving on right we have got this this is a bit of a night now this is another one I thought hang on we've had this already haven't we I thought we had but something about this made it stand out to me um, this is the Pottinger LW15. This is by Agra Design Austria B Gamer 003. This is a loading wagon for doing your forage, grass, hay, straw, um, all those wonderful things. It's not, I say it's not that big, but here's the thing um, you can have it in two modes. You can have it folded, and I'm pretty sure the other one we had you could unfold it. This one you get in either unfolded or folded. The capacity unfold like this is 15,000 litres, which isn't too bad. But what's even better than that is the price. It is ridiculously cheap. Um, it's only 10 slots, which I think is brilliant. Nice looking mod. 
very nice looking mod. Uh, this you'll find under tools, you'll find it under loading wagons. 675! That's it. Only requires 40 horsepower. That is unbelievably cheap. Now in its folded state, if you buy that version of it, it will only take 11,000 litres because it's folded. If you get it with the unfolded version, it will take 15,000 litres. Price didn't change. So my argument would be, why are you going to get the folded version? Unfolded, all day long. 675. We can change our wheels from standard to wide to wide. I'm back to standard again. Um, but you have to think that's for a 15,000 litre one, 675. Uh, while we're actually here, um, so that one was by Agrar Design Austria B Gamer 003. Um, next one, we've got another one. This is the Krona ZX 560GD. This is one of those ones that's got me a little bit. Mm, um, I don't. I, I, I never like doing this, but I'm going to be honest. Um, it, it's by Big Shogun. It's 27 slots, and we've already got one. We've got the standard in-game one. Um, the price is the same. That one only requires um, 25 slots, whereas this one requires 27. And as far as I can make out, the only options that are different are we can change the main colour from green to grey, the design colour from the kind of chrono beige, I guess it is, to green. Um, and then down here, we can have the thing at the front there in green or in the chrono um, kind of beige. That's all, because the other configurations, the tyres, Trelleborg or Michelin, standard or wide, and cover, yes or no, is the same as the other version. So, it's, I don't know, I'm always a little bit, I know a lot of stuff is copies of other stuff, and I know, you know, but sometimes you get masses of options, loads of different changes, things you can do with it, different capacities, off of one base vehicle, but it is, in essence, I guess, the same thing. You can change the colour, but anyway, it's there. It's an option. Same capacity, 56,000 litres. Um, it will use, like I say, 27 slots. Um, and that's it. That's the actual trailer itself. Don't get me wrong. It looks lovely. And I do like it in the grey and the green. I think it looks fantastic like that. Really, really nice. Nicely detailed mod. Uh, it's another loading wagon. Much bigger than that one. Obviously, 56,000 litres compared to 15. Um, but this will pick up your forage crop types, etc. There you go. Uh, moving on. I might need to go and grab a vehicle for this, actually. Um, or maybe not, but uh, maybe. So this is, um, as, you, as you can probably tell, this is the John Deere Cutter Trailer 300. This is by ETA La Marchoise. Um This is a header trailer. It will use uh, three slots. The beauty with this is you can put smaller headers on, fit on no problem at all. But when you hook it up to um, whatever vehicle, you can actually extend that out a bit further. So you can put slightly longer headers on it if you want to. That does extend out a little bit, which is very nice. But in essence, it's a header trailer. Um, I don't think it's designed specifically for a particular John Deere header. It just It's just a John Deere Cutter Trailer 300. You could probably get away putting any headers on it, really, but... Um, there it is, yeah. Um, this you'll find under header trailers. Yeah, header trailers can transport headers. It doesn't specify a particular header that it's for. Um, 5,200 to buy. No options available. You get it in the John Deere green and yellow. There you go. Uh, moving on. We've got so many to get through. I'm so sorry. Uh, right. Well, I'm Sam, not sorry, but we've got loads here. We've got this. Uh, this is the JCB, as you can see, Fast Track 3000 Extra. So this is the older version of the JCB Fast Track. So we've got at the moment the 4220, haven't we, in game? So this is the Fast Track 3000. Now, with this, we've got a few options. But the other thing I like about this is if you're looking to get a JCB Fast Track, how competitive this is with the one that we've got in game already. 
Now, the one in the game already, you can have doubles and you can have narrows and you can have stuff which this one does as well. This has got a lot more colour options, obviously, than the standard in game one. But it's the price that got me as well. Um, this will use 21 slots, so not mega, mega high on the slot count either. This is by STV Modding. Um, it's really nicely detailed mod. I don't know what made me go for the black and yellow, I just like the look of it. We can open the door and the window, it sounds awesome. Um, this you'll find under vehicles, under medium tractors. So the JCB Fast Track 4220 is 196 grand for 235 horsepower. So that's the standard in game one. Um, we can have that with Trelleborg, Nokian. I see it's in Trelleborg and Nokian, but we can have standard, wides, twins, narrows, and back to standard. We can have a front loader attached on this. That's one difference, though. We can have a front loader on that. But 235 horsepower, there are no other options available. This one... Starts at 162 grand, so it's already cheaper. 195 horsepower, so it's a little bit less than the horsepower for 162 grand. Uh, we can change the main colour to anything on there, if you want to go with a red JCB. Rim colour, again, we can change it to, you know suit whatever you want really that's what we've already got what we're doing maybe green if you want to go for that i don't know why you would um tire cho choices are pretty much the same we've got trelleborg we've got i oh, know we've got michelins on this as well we? michelins knock-ins so trelleborg standard wide wider weights twins narrows back to standard um under michelins we've got standard wides wide and weights back to standard again but then the engine setup, we can have 3,200 extra, or the 3,230 for extra 8,500, which gives us 230 horsepower. Only 173,600. So that's five horsepower less. Admittedly, it doesn't come with the front loader option. But you can get that at 230 horsepower for 173 grand, whereas the other one at 235 horsepower is 196 grand. So, yeah, I mean, if you're looking for an alternative version of it, um, it's only five horsepower less, but it's a little bit cheaper as well. Uh, I, I, I think that's brilliant. Sounds great too. Oh, the, uh, the speed as well is different. It's 43 miles per hour on this one, and I think the other one only goes to 38. So it's a little bit faster too. Um, we will open that menu. Horn. Beacons. Lights. As you would expect. Um, window. Opens and closes like so. Door. Opens and closes like so. But yeah, I like it. It's, you know, if you are looking to get a JCB fast track and the small one, it's a little bit of a cheaper option. With a few more options available slightly higher top speed but like I say it does you don't get a front loader so maybe that's something that people think oh I'm not too sure but anyway there you go that's by STV modding sorry if I'm rattling through these I've got we've got a lot to get through um, I'm just very conscious of that now NMC today this is the NMC blowout day wow have we got a lot um, right in front of us here we've got the NMC module trailer this is a love it or hate it one for me so the griffin pack that comes with all the different modules all the different backs and things and you'll need that if you're going to use the modules um you can have the griffin the griffin back there's a gooseneck one now that will take them well if you haven't got a gooseneck and you want to pull it with a, a tractor this is the new version so this is the nmc module trailer which has got a normal attacher only problem i've got with this it's got a swivel axle section at the front here and if you know what it's like trying to back underneath anything with support legs, that can be fiddly at the best of times. With a swivel axle, wow, that becomes a game. Um, unless you are incredibly proficient, which takes time and practice, um, and some people have just got the knack and can do it perfectly, takes me a lot of practice. That, for me, makes it a little bit fiddly. It's a nice mod. Loads of details, loads of options on it. Um, so this is the module trailer. This will use three slots, nice and low on the slot count. Um, this you'll find... Oh man, this is where this all gets so confusing. I th think this was miscellaneous. Yep. Only 3,000 to buy, so puts it really, really cheap as well. Not too much of a problem. 
Like I say, only three slots, three grand, three slots. Options available, we can change the rim color to anything on that color palette, like so. Uh, we can change the main color, like so. We can change the design color. It's not gonna let me go back. Oh, this does me, it, it, it drives me mad. It does my head in. Pick one of those. Um, this changes the bed and it gives it like a metallic, uh, what should I go with, maybe the class green? If you look, or not the bed, the back. It's that back section just in the light there. So that back section where it says an MC changes it to a metallic version of that. So we can do the rim color, the main color, and then we can do that design color does that back section. Um, wheel brand, we can have lizard. We can have Nokian, and that's it. No wheel size options available, but that's what you get. Um, now what I'll try and do, that's why I haven't backed out too far. So with whichever, whichever module you've got, back up like so underneath, hook it up, on goes the module, and away you go, which is all very nice indeed. So if you're pulling it with a tractor and you don't, haven't got a semi or a gooseneck, you don't need it. Um, but like I say, then backing under it, into it, can be a bit of a problem. Don't worry, we're going to get to those in a little while. So there you go, that's the module trailer. Moving on! Because there is more <laughs> from NMC. We've got the NMC three axle transport trailer, which is the next one. Also by North Modding Company. Now this is a nice one. We have had some semi versions of these. Um, fifth wheel attached ones. This is a normal trailer attached one. So if you've got, again, tractor or something like that. What's nice about this, triple axle in the centre, pretty much in the centre. So you're less likely to get this bottomed out going over bumps and stuff like that. It's a nice looking trailer, not a bad length. I don't know if it's got straps. It has got straps, yeah. Okay. Has got straps. Along it. I do like the ladder rungs there so we can get over this and it has these wheel well bits so you can kind of get yourself set up nicely. Um, it's a nice looking trailer, nice looking mod. So like I say, if you want one of these to pull vehicles around but you haven't got um, a lorry, truck, semi, whatever it might be. Uh, now, options available on this for what we can do with it. Um, we can raise and lower the back, like so, for loading up. We can open and close these, so it gives you a little bit of width on that. So anything with slightly wider wheels or wider tyres, it's kind of almost like a kind of clamping option, really, I guess in a way. You bring them up like that and it sort of it's just stops stuff sliding off. Um, so you can have them folded right up out of the way or kind of do that and it gives you a little bit more support. But those move. I think that's it. Um, fasten or unfasten tension belts so there are tension belts all the way along. Um, and yeah, I mean it does what it should do. We can fold and unfold in, raise or lower the middle axle like so. I think this has the same... I'm pretty sure all the trailers I'm going to look at now from NMC all have the same options. But again, this one is... I want to say low loaders on this one. Yes, it is. Three axle transport trailer, 14 grand to buy, not too expensive. Um, this is three slots as well. I'm pretty sure the options are the same. We can change the rim colour to anything on that palette, like that. Uh, main body, we can change like so. And again, we've got the choice of lizards or knock-ins for our tyre choices. Not too bad. Now, uh, next up then. Right, so these, yeah, we'll talk about all three. All three, I think, as well, pretty much got the same options available on these. Um, so, we have got here, this is the NMC flatbed trailer. We've then got next to it the NMC gooseneck F30B and then we've got the gooseneck F20B as you can imagine the 20B is a little bit shorter the F30B is a little bit longer both those attached with goosenecks so for something like this the flatbed or any of the vehicles available that do have a gooseneck attacher these will attach to it so again these are flatbeds designed for hauling pallets and bales and anything you want to haul like that they're not low loaders you can't drive vehicles up onto them but again if you haven't got a lorry um, and you want to be able to shift larger loads, these will do the job. These obviously being goosenecks, I find a little bit easier to manoeuvre as opposed to a swivel front axle. This one is a little bit longer, as you can see. All three have straps 
all the way along their lengths, um, which I really like as an option. I mean, loads of straps. You've no shortage of strapping points. So whatever you're putting on there, you're not going to have an issue. Um, I'll hook up to one of the goose necks. Now, again, I, I apologise if I miss something on one of these. I really do apologise. I'm just very conscious of how many we've got to get through. So we can strap all on, all off. You can see the metallic-y colour on there. The same with the blue on that one. And that one I left standard. Um, but lights on those. They're really nice trailers. I do like these longer gooseneck ones as well for holding larger loads and stuff. I love that, the metallic shining in the light as you move. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at the options, and I think the options are the same for all three. Um, these, I think, we're all under <laughs> bailing technology, I think. Pretty sure they are. I'll stop there. Um, so let's have a look at these in store. I think it was bailing technology. So there we go. The NMC flatbed trailer, 20 grand. The flatbed trailer is three slots. The NMC Gooseneck F30B is two slots. And the Gooseneck F20B is two slots. That was nine grand, that's five grand. So obviously they get a little bit cheaper as you go down the length and size of them. But the options are, I'm pretty sure, the same. We can change the main colour, like so. The rim colour, like so. The design colour does the bed again. If I go, say, for the pink, keeps it metallic, but you can have a, a coloured kind of metallic bed on that, which I quite like as an option. I do like that. Uh, and then options on tyres. Will Brown, we've got Lizard and Knockin again, like on pretty much all the trailers from NMC today. Um, and then we can change the design. Now, this is where I think all three are the same as well. We can have standard or we can have it with a front wall on each of those if you want to go down that route. If everything's strapped down there, you shouldn't necessarily need a front wall, but if you're loading things up and you want to push them up against it before you strap down, they can be quite handy to have um, on there. And that front wall will be the same colour as the design colour as the bed. Um, I will just check one of the goosenecks, but I'm pretty sure they're the same. Uh, so yeah, main colour, like so. Rim colour, like so. Design colour, no. Design colour. Does the bed? Let's go with oh, I don't know. Let's go with orange. Yep, as you can see there. Lizard, Nokian, standard, or with front wall. So we go. Those are the options on all three of those. Very nice trailers. I say absolute load for an NMC today. Which brings me on to the next one. This is bonkers. Um, yeah, I mean, this, strangely, this is the NMC D11 Bulldozer. This has got a few attachments, and this thing is massive. Now, it doesn't come with too high a slot count, which is quite impressive. Um, this is only, where is it on my list, 14 slots, which is amazing. The attachments on this, we've got one slot, one slot, one slot, and then four slots, I think, on these. The only downside to this is the price <laughs> to buy it. Wow. To lease it, let's just put this into perspective, to lease it, 73 grand. To buy it, well, we'll get on to that in a minute. Let's just have a look at it first. <laughs> I love the NMC logo, like the cat logo. Put with the NMC on there. Um, the NMC beast. And it is a beast. Um, if you have a black hole uh, that needs to be moved, this has the mass, it has its own gravity, um, and it has enough power to pull a black hole. So if you want a black hole moved anywhere, um, if you're trying to maybe sh uh, shove a mountain, if you want to move a mountain possibly, this is the vehicle you're going to use to do that. Um, let's have a look at it in store first. It's just... wow! Uh, under vehicles, under miscellaneous, the NMC D11 Bulldozer, you're not mistaken, 1,400,000. 
that's up there. Um, the standard version is 850 horsepower. So we start on the D11 bulldozer, 850 horsepower, 1,400,000. We can change the main colour to anything on that palette, like so. We can change the rim colour to anything on that palette, like so. I don't know why you want to go for those options. But then we can have the D11 bulldozer, 850 horsepower, which seems okay. Or you can go <laughs> to the D11 superpower, which adds another 40 grand on, 1,000. 500 horsepower just let that soak in for a minute <laughs> 1500 horsepower those are the options available now when we get in it hang on a second just bear with me one second okay when we get into it it does that so it puts the ladder down opens and closes the door and then the ladder gets put away again start it up We've seen the person in it, me in it, you can kind of get some idea of the scale of this thing. Now, what I'm going to do is lift the blade. The animations are incredible. It sounds brilliant. It looks just... I mean, it is incredible. I have got two of the attachments on here already. So we've got two dozer blades available on this. i drop that down and disconnect it. And then I'll drop the back down and we'll disconnect that as well. So this here in the middle is your base unit. That... Look <laughs> at the size of the rotator. Or the actual, uh, yeah, the, the grill on the front. Uh, now, lights. If you're doing work at night, you're not going to have any problems at all. Does it have, I don't think it has doors open and closed or anything like that. No. Horn? No, come on. That's got to have a... Oh, I mean, it's got to be like a ship's horn. Surely something that size has got to be a ship's horn. Um, in cab. Fairly sparse on the detail, actually. But if I turn the engine off, the screen comes on when you start it up. And we recycle for our light options. They will come on on the screen, which is very nice. We drive. The dial moves in the middle as well, which is what you'd kind of expect. Um, so... Options available. On the back here, we can have the NMC three-point. So this is a three-point link attacher. It does also have a trailer attached on it as well. So if we go all the way back. Why is that? Oh, got be miles out because of the uh, hydraulic rams and stuff. So that is a three-point. So you can hook up anything three-point related. If you want to pull 15 plows or something like that, um, you know, set yourself up a whole array of ploughs onto the back of something. Absolutely go for it. So this will do any farming jobs because it's got a three-point link on it. Like so. Put the SPSL 9 on it. Off you go. You can do ploughing regularly like that. So anything three-point link related. Or if you want to move things around, it does have a trailer hitch down the bottom as well. You can do that with it. Which is pretty impressive in its own right anyway. Um, let's take that off. We'll have a look at these attachments in a minute. If you want to use this up on a silage clamp, bunker silo for doing silage levelling, we do have this. This is a blade leveller. So this is one of the dozer blades, six metres wide, raise and lower like so, or we can raise and lower it manually, L1 and right stick up and down so I can move it into any position I want. I can also tilt in and out, or forwards and backwards, so if you want to refer to it. So we can do it manually. And if you want to be levelling or grading your bunker silo, your silage, you can use that, which is awesome. <laughs> um, we have also got on the back, first, when I saw this, first time I saw this and pictures of it, the first thing I thought was, having watched Millennial Farmers and Master Pipe Layer Randy, um, I thought like for putting in drainage tile, that kind of thing, it's one of those great big, you know, it drags along, right, let's come back out a bit, didn't I? Um, and we'll dig a great big gouge in the ground that you can um, then lay pipe into. But you can actually use it as a standalone plough. So if I open this menu up, um, it will allow me to create fields. So L1 and triangle allow create fields. And when I drop it, it does a three furrow, three furrow plough. Now you may think to yourself, well, you know what? I haven't really got a use for that in game and I'll be honest with you when you look at it you think we need 
we need mining we need or something you know we need to be able to move dirt you know but people will argue it's farming simulator it's not a, it's not an excavating game it's not a mining game what i like is the fact they've bought it and it, they have given us ways to use it in game for doing various different jobs which brings me on to the last tip now you might be using this for forestry so you might be using one of these dozer blades for moving piles of logs around this will move a forest if you want to it will move a forest around they did put up a video recently of this um pushing like a row of in-game pickups they lined a whole load of pickups up and it just just pushed and pushed and pushed but with this blade as well what with this one this is the plow blade what we can do if you're doing forestry and you've cleared the woods you've done your stump grinding and you've moved your logs either with this or whatever we can again with this allow create fields so we allow create fields l1 and triangle drop it down but what i love is the animation on this so at seven miles an hour we can plow at six meters that's pretty handy i like that as an option downside is the price you've got a one million four hundred thousand pounds euros or dollars plow so yeah i mean i love it don't get me wrong what's not to love i think it's a fantastic bit of kit i suppose playing devil's advocate you've got to ask the question especially on console as well how much use are you going to get out of it I'm sure people are going to play they're going to find uses for it they're going to do it and they're going to do some awesome things with it and don't get me wrong like I said before I think it is awesome I think it's an awesome mod I, I think it's a brilliant brilliant bit of kit um, I love the fact the slot count is so low on it it's just the price but then in real life that's what they're going to cost don't you? You know, again I, I get it they're expensive bits of machinery but if you're kind of building up a farm or, or whatever you're doing even if you're doing forestry that's a lot you've got to build up to to afford one of those isn't it but anyway yeah the equipment itself you'll find under tools under miscellaneous so the blade leveler is 80 grand wow um that was one slot the blade plow is 50 grand that's one slot the NMC Ripper that does the three uh, furrow is um, one slot, and then the three point link is 34 grand. That's 34 grand. That's 34 grand. Um, and that will uh, use four slots for the three point link. These ones you can change the color as well to match whatever you've decided to go with, with your vehicle color as well. Um, whoops, hang on. So click on that. So we can change the color on those as well, uh, like so. Um, so that's the. Uh, yeah, that's the NMC D11 Bulldoze <laughs> by North Modding Company. Wow, what an incredible, incredible bit of kit. Um, which brings me on to the last of the mods for today. And if you think we're, we're going to stop there, we really aren't. <laughs> because what we've got is this. And this I am in love with. I just think it's amazing. It's got a high slot count, which is going to put a lot of people off. And I don't care. <laughs> I really, oh, I'm doing my Stone Valley Let's Play at the moment and this is going to fit in perfectly on there i mean look at it it's so so nice um again you might not like it you might not like case vehicles you might not like this particular thing this is the stx steiger this is by nefg modding it will use 50 slots so fairly high in the slot count one other thing i've noticed it's a lovely looking mod really nicely detailed um is that in the mod tub or in the store when you come to buy it it's under vehicles it's under large tractors yeah it was large tractors so the stx steiger but you can have this in so many different variants the cheapest version is only 95 grand so although the slot count is fairly high the options available are amazing but i found coming into the store i think because of the amount of options it really really slowed down my option choices on this um, which really did surprise me, but you know, I guess it is what it is. So, if we come into the store now to have a look at it, and it's taken ages to go in, um, we can start off with a 275 horsepower standard configuration. It's got 900s on it, Michelin 900 42s for 95 grand for a 275 horsepower tractor. That is brilliant, anyway, regardless of anything else. That's incredible. So, under configuration, we can have standard weight or standard 
300 kilogram weight. I apologise for the delay between this. It's, I, it, this is how long it's taken. 500 kilogram weight. Adds a little step and rail things. 700 kilogram. 900 kilogram. Back to standard. Um, we can have wheel brand Michelin. This is going to really drag this out, sorry. We can have lizards. Mitus. And back to Michelin. So, I'll try and get through these as quick as I can. We do have a lot of options here. We can have 900 single 42s. 410 can have 710 dual 38s. Now each of these options then comes with a rear set of weights and a front set of weights. So we go up to the next one. Seven ten joules forty two. I thought that's what we just had. Oh no, we had thirty eights. So seven ten joules forty twos. And again, we can have rear weight, front weight. Then 838s, so wider. And we can have rear weight, front weight. Eight hundred forty twos again. Rear weight, front weight. Then we have narrow jewels, 30 inch. This is taking a ridiculous amount of time. Rear weight, front weight. Narrow triples, and then back to 900 single 42s. That's on the Michelins. Let's go again. Lizards, narrow dual 30s, rear weight, front weight. Narrow triples. 1400 LSWs, which I love the look of. I think that looks phenomenal. But that adds, adds 55 grand onto the price. Quite pricey, I'll be honest, but they do look amazing. And then back. Uh, then we go up to... Mitres, sorry. 800 joules. Rear weight. Front weight. Oh, that's it, under Mitres. You'll be glad to know we're back to Michelins. Right. <laughs> Extremities. We can have none. We can have US spec. Like so. We can have a U spec, like so. Or back to none again. Hitch on the back, we can have just a regular trailer hitch on the back. Hitch with weights up on the back. It then increases the weights on the back. Or you can have a three point. Three point adds 27,500. But to be fair, again, 275 horsepower tractor, 422 grand. That I don't think that's too bad. A, that's not a bad trade off, in all honesty. Even if it does add all that on. And then back again. Now, engine setup. 
Um, you, let's go to this first. GPS on the top. You can have it none or with the FM750 guidance, but you don't have to have that. Uh, right. Let's go back up to engine. Come on. Help me out here. Right. So we have a 275 horsepower. Buckle in because this is going to take ages. I do apologise. It's just so, so slow. Um, 275 horsepower. 280 horsepower. The price is gradually go up. If you look down the bottom right hand corner, the price is gradually go up. 325 horsepower. 330 horsepower. 330 horsepower Steiger. Now what you'll notice as we go up as well, it does say in the menu, in the mod tab, that it's got three chassis sizes. I think the chassis sizes change as the engines go up. I think that's what it means. I couldn't find three different options of this in the mod tab. Um, and I also couldn't find any options, other options in here. So I'm, I think it just means as it goes up through the engine sizes, the chassis changes size as we go. Three hundred thirty five horsepower Steiger. Three hundred seventy five, so it would be gone up now, which would gone wider. Three hundred eighty. You know what I'm gonna do at this point? I'm gonna cut it. This goes up through the engine sizes. Because it, uh, for some reason, like I said, I don't know why, all the other mods have been fine. This one is just taking ages to go between each individual option. What I'm going to do is cut to the largest one, um, and we'll have a look at the price for that. See you in a moment. And so, the biggest of the bunch, we've got this one, the 535 Steiger with the 50-year anniversary on it. Um, 535 horsepower, but look at the price. 247,300 for a 535 horsepower Steiger. I like that a lot. I really, really do. I think that with a set of those big old LSWs, but they're going to be another 55 grand. But even then, just over 300 grand for a 535 horsepower Steiger. Um, if we go down one, I think it takes the, five, the 50 years thing off. Yeah, so if you don't want that, you can just have the 535 Steiger like so. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, I love the options. Like I said, I'm sorry it took so long to go through them, but it gets even better. I love the sound of it. It's a fantastic looking mod. Sounds great. So we'll open up the help window. Uh, horn. Bit of a peep peep again. Uh, we can open the door, like so. It does say open cover. That opens up those. So if you've got wider tyres and stuff on, you need to make sure if you're on a US spec, everything is, is as it should be. Lights. In cab. Nice and neat and tidy. Just noticed, no beacons. Ah. It's interesting. But there you go. So that's the uh, the case. STX Steiger by NEFG Modding. Um, we have had a lot to get through. If you're still with me, if you're stuck with it, thank you so much for sticking with it. We've got some really interesting stuff, some different stuff, some really cool stuff. That, if you are playing Iskia Farms, then I would honestly, and our people will have a go at me and say it's my job to do it. I, I haven't played Iskia since I did the first look, map tour. Um, and there'll be a huge amount of setting up just to go over and show that. But if you are playing on it, don't forget that it's a separate mod. You'll need to download it, move it over, and you should now be able to plant your stuff. Um, and with that, we have come to the end of this. I hope you found it useful and informative in some way, shape, or form. If you have, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest.
whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.